the little gray cells. These will always catch the criminal. F. U. Poirot, Detective Extraordinary. <laughs> Packed pages of Agatha Christie's unforgettable stories of corpses, clues, and crime. Mutual now brings you, complete with bowler hat and magnificent mustache, your favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, starring Harold Huber in Murder is a Private Affair. to see Madame Baldwin. This way, sir. Madame expects you. Mr. Hercule Poirot. Ah, Mr. Poirot, come right in. My family has been panting with eagerness waiting for you. Speak for yourself, Aunt Amelia. You see, Mr. Poirot, you'll get to know the family without my introducing you. That was my stupid nephew, Henry Baldwin. Really, Aunt Amelia? I think this procedure of yours is not only high-handed, but insulting. You hear that, Mr. Poirot? She thinks I'm insulting her. That's my nephew Henry's wife, Alice. Henry's the only one of the Baldwins who married a plain girl like Alice. That's why we call him stupid. One reason, at any rate. Excuse me, madame, but I do not see the place of Hercule Poirot in this, uh, what appears to be a family squabble. Your place is where I tell you. You get your check for this little matter. Madame, when you sent for me, I thought you might be in difficulty. I see now that I was mistaken. Au revoir. Just a minute, Mr. Poirot. Madame, I have fortunately attained a place in my profession where it is not necessary for me to be insulted by impolite ladies. Nor to watch this same lady inflict insults, deserved or not, upon her family. Good for you, Mr. Poirot. Thank you, mademoiselle. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry if I was rude, Mr. Poirot. But it's partly force of habit and partly annoyance. Also, I take it as one of the privileges of the old. Will you forgive me? But of course, madame. I brought you here to solve a murder, quietly and with no fuss. Madame, I suppose you realize that is a most amazing statement. Murder is never quiet. Exactly. And I'm not going to have this fine old house of mine tramped on by a lot of heavy-footed policemen with photographers taking pictures all over the place. Madame, it is difficult to follow you. Do you mean that there has already been a murder, or that you suspect there is going to be one? Both. My maid was killed this morning, and I am going to be killed as soon as the murderer thinks it's safe. Madame, this is a matter for the police. Oh, fiddlesticks. There's no necessity for the police. The whole thing can be settled today. How, madame? Very simply. My maid was killed because someone of my family mistook her for me. Oh, your mother. My a statement. I may be old, but I'm not a doddering imbecile. Not yet. And what leads you to make this assumption, madame? Mr. Poirot, I may not be a detective, but when an old lady in her 70s has a fortune of six million dollars to be distributed upon her death to the members of a greedy and inflation family... Mother, I've stood all I'm going to. I don't know what the rest of the family is going to do, but I'm getting out of here. Go right ahead, Lawrence, my son. Remember, the murderer of Marie is going to the electric chair. Madame, I do not know what has been going on in this house. But once again, I strongly advise you to call the police. Well, Lawrence, if you're going, please close the door gently behind you. Uh, Mr. Poirot, are you going to take this case? I can scarcely answer that, monsieur, because as yet I do not have the facts. It's very simple. Uh, may I, Mother? Certainly. As long as I am here to see that you tell the truth. Well... This morning, Mother went into the pantry to prepare the coffee and found her maid, Marie, stabbed to death. She immediately jumped to the insane conclusion that some one of us had done it. Mr. Farrell, it's well known that I insist on preparing my own coffee every morning. All the members of my family know it. There was no one in the house except the servants and the people you see in this room. Well, today I overslept, something I haven't done in years. And when I went down to the pantry, I found Marie. She's very much like me, approximately the same age and build. But, madame, I still do not see why you do not call the police. It's very simple, Mr. Poirot. I know that someone in this room is a murderer. And I want you to find out which one it is. And then, when you've discovered the murderer, he or she will commit suicide. And we'll simply give a story to the papers as a double suicide. That will clear everything up and... Where are you going? You call the police, madame. Your suggestion is not only vicious, but also it is against the law. Mr. Farrow, you are brought here on a confidential matter, and I... Murder, madame, is never confidential. 
Jenkins, I told you we were not to be disturbed. Uh, I know, madam, but uh, this is about Marie. Marie? What about her? She's dead. Yes, I know, madam. But Marie, or rather, her body has disappeared. It's no longer lying in the pantry. <laughs> Don't feed the animals, miss. Oh. It's against the rules. Lawrence, look at that magnificent beast. Look at the way he walks up and down the cage. Tigers do have power in their walk, don't they, Olivia? They're beautiful. This is vaguely reminiscent of you, darling. That same feline grace. Why, Lawrence, you improve each time I see you. You couldn't, Olivia. You were too overwhelming the first time I met you. When I was engaged to Henry Baldwin, you mean? By the way, how is dear Henry and that stupid little wife of his? Worried, Olivia. Very worried. How did it go? Are you sure it's all right to talk here? In the Central Park Zoo, my dear. <laughs> no one's around but the tigers and the children. No, I don't know quite how to say. Oh, Mother blew up, of course. I knew she would. Oh. Don't jump, Lawrence. He can't get at you. Well, I'm nervous. Mother went right to work. Assembled us all in the library and accused one of us of trying to murder her. Why, she frightened? Well, that's hard to say, Olivia. You know, in many ways, Mother is like you. You're both strong women. Maybe that's why I, I love you so much. Oh, never mind that, Lawrence. Go on about Amelia. She called in her cue Poirot. Poirot? That's right, Tiger. I don't like it either. Poirot is about the only one smart enough to see through this. Then, then you think we ought to drop it, huh? No. No, we'll just have to watch our steps, Lawrence. <laughs> Poirot, but I swear that sometimes I think police headquarters is a much quieter place when you weren't in New York. You're gone now, Monsieur Stevens. Surely you are not saying that the city of New York had no murders before Hercule Poirot arrived. Uh, sure we had, but they were simple gang killings. Some torpedo put the slug on another hood, and well, there you had it. There you have it indeed, mon ami, an entirely new language. Well, I understand that better than Miss Baldwin, dame. She's sure a holy terror. Followed me around the house, bawling me out and calling me names. Poirot, wow. where is that maid body? Alas, mon brave, that is a question that I ask myself. And who could have taken it? Now, you tell me that the whole family was sitting there in the library with you. That is right, mon vieux. And we checked on the servants. None of them could possibly have moved it. Mon ami, there is something in this case that is out of focus. Observe, we are seeing it in a distorted light. I'm not seeing it at all. We checked every inch of that pantry for blood stains, and not a one. Everything washed clean, which means that whoever took the corpse away also had time to clean up the pantry floor. Ah, uh, Poirot, I'd give my eye teeth if you'd gotten a look at that body. It is not the body that bothers me so much as the feeling I have. That unless we are careful, there will be another murder. So you believe the old lady's story that someone's out after her? I neither believe nor disbelieve it, Stephen. There is something that we have missed. Something that is in the back of my mind. Something that would open up this whole case for us. Now, look, give me something to go on, will you, Poirot? Do you think that the old lady Baldwin is in danger, or don't you? But of course she is in danger, mon ami. But from what source, I cannot yet tell. Sometimes I almost feel as if... As if what? As if she were in danger more from herself than from anyone else. <laughs> Hercule Poirot, madam. No, oh, have him come in, Jenkins. This way, sir. Bonjour, madam. Good day to you, Mr. Poirot. I suppose you've come back here to do some more snooping? Madam, for a woman who has just stated that she was sure an attempt was made on her life, you are singularly unafraid. What good will it do me to be afraid? Certainly I should be if I felt that I had to depend on either you or the police. You've done nothing but track up the house and ask a lot of silly questions. Then you are relying on yourself to stave off whatever threatens you, madam? I've done it all my life, and I'm too old to change now. May I ask what it is that you intend to do? Yes. I'm going to change my will. Leave every cent to charity. That ought to stop the wolves from howling for my blood. I ask myself, madam, I ask myself if they were howling before today. But? What do you mean? Of course they were. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Amelia. Who is this? Not a friend, Amelia, not a friend. Aren't you frightened? 
Listen to this, Mr. Potter. No, why should I be? You were right, you know. Marie was killed by mistake. But perhaps that was all for the best. Now you know we mean what we say. And who is we? Shall we say your creditors? You'll have to be more specific than that. I'm afraid I can't, and I haven't much time. Amelia, you're lucky to be alive. You won't be unless you give us $50,000. You won't get it. We'll mail you instructions as to how we want it and when and where. You're wasting your time, whoever you are. I think not, Amelia. I think not. Marie died quickly and painlessly. But there's no reason why you shouldn't be longer about it and suffer. Think it over. There. You still think that I'm fooling you, Mr. Parrow. You heard that? No, madam. This telephone call gives one furiously to think, eh? So maybe some good will come out of your thinking. Madam, you are a strong-willed person. May I advise that you either leave the city for a short time or take police protection? No nonsense. I don't scare easily. And I won't have the police tramping around this house. I thought you said you had an idea. That is quite true, madam. But my idea simply tells me that there have been evil forces unchained in this house. Well, I told you that. Au revoir, madam. And please, if you will not heed my advice, Make sure you bolt your door. Henry. Yes, dear? Say this is exceptionally good coffee tonight. Thank you, darling. I married a good cook, didn't I, Ella? Yes, Henry. You married a good cook. Henry. Yes, dear? Oh, nothing. Come on, come on. There's something bothering you. I can see it with that little worry line between your eyes. Henry, why did you marry me? Oh. So we're uh, back to that again, huh? Yes, we're back to that again. I was Alice Lennox, a plain little girl, and you were Henry Baldwin, nephew of the great Amelia. So it was all wrong. You mean you don't love me, Alice? I not love you. Henry, you know I'm so mad about you at her. Just that I don't... I can't understand why you married me. Because I love you, darling. And what about Olivia? Oh, oh Alice, that's just part of my wild oats. Every man who's worth his soul is entitled to a few wild oats, darling. I never should have married you, never. But, Henry, you don't know what it meant to me. You don't know what you meant to me. Here I was, perfectly resigned to living out the rest of my life as an old maid, and then... Then someone beyond my wildest dream falls in love with me. Darling, it happens sometimes. I feel that is there. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to let anyone in. I'm so sure that every time I open that door, someone will be standing there who'll take you away from me. Now, don't worry, darling. Bonsoir, madame. Bonsoir, monsieur. May I include for a little while? Oh, oh yes, come in. Oh, but I see that I interfere with your dinner. That is unforgivable. No, no, Mr. Poirot, we're just finishing Captain Corby? No, thank you. I will be brief, thanks. Uh, that little scene this morning at the house of Madame Baldwin, that was most unfortunate, mister. Well, we're quite used to Aunt Amelia's tantrums, Mr. Powerow. You mean, monsieur, that your aunt is as insulting as that always? Only since Henry married me, Mr. Poirot. Madame Baldwin objected to your marriage, then? Only enough to cut Henry out of her will altogether and have him fired from his job. Ah, yes. Madame Baldwin is a stubborn woman. Well, this was one time that she didn't get her way. I married Alice. And not Olivia. The pardon? Olivia? Olivia Wilson, the actress. You've heard of her? Not until now, mademoiselle. Uh, tell me, in the Baldwin family, there are you, Monsieur Henry, and Madame Baldwin's son, Monsieur Lawrence, and that young lady who sat in the library so quietly and said nothing. Yes. Oh, that's, uh, that's Jean, that's Lawrence's sister. She's a very sweet girl, Mr. Poirot, but completely terrified by Aunt Amelia. You needn't worry about Jean, darling. She's the smartest one of us all. And what makes you say that, Mr. Henry? A few years ago, Jean fell in love with a nice enough boy by the name of Harrison. And of course, Aunt Amelia wouldn't hear of Jean marrying him. Hmm. You see, Aunt Amelia likes to choose the people that Baldwin's marry. So poor little Jean didn't marry Harrison. But she is one of the Baldwins who has her cake and eats it, too. She still sneaks out and sees them on the side. Well, Henry, don't. You make it sound so mean and hateful. Yes, yeah, there is so much in this case that is spiteful and evil, madame. So much that it worries me. Tell me, Mr. Poirot, have you found Marie's body yet? Not yet, monsieur. Mr. Poirot, why did you really come here? Do you think we had anything to do with... with what happened? I came, madame, to see if you had a telephone. <laughs>
Poirot, will you please tell me why we're on this train heading for a little town like Boonville? Because, mon ami, as I have already pointed out, Boonville is the home of Madame Baldwin's maid, Marie. Now look, Poirot, there are some things I just won't believe. I've been a cop for over 15 years now, and I know that one of the toughest things to do is get rid of a body. Bodies just don't disappear into thin air. Trebert so Stevens, you are on the right track. Continue. I am? <clears throat> well, uh, the way I figure it is this. No one of the family could have stolen the body. Precisely, mon ami. Now you are making good use of the little guy's cell. And no one of the servants could have taken it. My congratulations, mon brave. Yes, here we are on a train, which means that somebody not only grabbed the body and washed the pantry floor, but they shipped the body off to Boonville. No, no, no. It is she. You go wrong. Oh. Look out, Stephen. I once told you we had the wrong view of this case. Eh? We were looking at it from the wrong angle. The center of this is a selfish, dominating old woman ruling a family and being hated by this family. What's that got to do with Marie's body? In a way, everything. You have just said that no one could have taken the corpse, and you were right. But And well... yet the body was taken away and the floor washed. There is therefore only one possible explanation. Sure. The body got up and walked away. Exactly, mon ami. Hmm? But first, Marie washed the pantry floor, so we would think that the bloodstains which had never been there had been washed away. What? What are you trying? Well, good morning, Rose. Good morning. I've been waiting here for you for some time. I rather expected you'd be late after reading the morning papers. What do you mean by that, Olivia? So you really did it, darling. You know, I'm beginning to admire you more and more. Now, stop it, Olivia. You know I had nothing to do with Mother's death. Oh, Lord. You can break down and tell me the truth. After all, it's strange that it should happen just the way we planned it so many times. Dad in a bedroom, no one around. Olivia, you're crazy. I tell you, I didn't do it. <laughs> you have it your own way, Lawrence, but uh, he doesn't seem to believe you either. Olivia, I won't have you talking this way. Well, then, Lawrence, darling, tell me who did do it. And don't say it was a bird. I don't know. I swear that's the truth, Olivia. I don't know who did it. And what are the police doing about it? Oh, they've been all over the house. Told the family that none of us could leave town. They even had Henry and Alice over and questioned them thoroughly. Was Poirot with them? Yes, but he didn't say much. Just went around shaking his head and peering into corners. But why are you so interested? You... Olivia. What, darling? Olivia, where were you last night? You broke a date with me. So I did. Olivia, where were you? Oh, no, you're stupid to ask me. You won't like it when I tell you. I want to know, where were you? All right. I had dinner with your biggest rival for my affection, Stuart Charles. And a very interesting dinner, too. I don't believe you. It's easy enough to check. Just call Stuart, not. Lawrence, that man over there with the mustache, quick. Who is he? Where? What? But that's it. Why, of course. Yes. Oh, you fool, you stupid, blundering fool. You let him follow you here. But, Olivia, I didn't know you can't tell me. We're going to walk out of here together. When we get to Fifth Avenue, you can turn downtown. I'll turn uptown. After that, I don't care what happens to you. But I promise you one thing. Mr. Poirot won't be able to stay with me. But, Olivia... Come on. rid of a man. As I remember it, Olivia, that was always your trouble. Oh, but this is different. A different kind of a man. As a matter of fact, I got rid of him mainly because of you. Well, now, that was very considerate of you, Olivia. But you seem to forget that I don't object any longer if you bring someone else along when you need me. I could be bringing him along, darling. He was following me. And his name was Poirot. All right, Olivia, what do you want? Information. Tell me how you killed Amelia. If I had, I wouldn't be fool enough to tell you. Henry, don't you ever get bored with that dull wife of yours? That is an interesting question, Mademoiselle Olivia. Oh. But I feel that I can give the answer. I was sure I'd shaken you off. But of course, that was the impression I wanted you to have. What's the big idea, Olivia? Is there something you're trying to spring on me? Monsieur, I assure you that this is one time that Mademoiselle Olivia is completely innocent. She had no idea when she telephoned you that she was arranging an appointment for three. Tell me, monsieur, why did you meet Mademoiselle? Why should I? Because it is most important. Mademoiselle Olivia is involved in a plot. In this plot, she has two assistants. 
One of them I already know. The other I'm seeking. Well, that's ridiculous. That's the most absurd story I ever heard. A plot. Really, Mr. Poirot, your mind is much too melodramatic. But of course, mademoiselle, we have had a murder and many threats. That is not melodrama, eh, mademoiselle? Murder? Well, that's two. I ah, know, only one. Marie is in perfect health. Why? why? And now, will you tell me why you consented to meet, mademoiselle? Because of Alice, Mr. Poirot. Oh, Henry, darling, that's funny. That's too funny. Strangely enough, mademoiselle, that is the one reason that I will accept. Well, thank you, Mr. Poirot. You know how Alice feels about our marriage. She's worried all the time because she thinks she isn't beautiful. How right she is. She has more charm and sweetness in her little finger than you have in your whole glamorous makeup, Olivia. Mr. Poirot, you can see for yourself that this girl is a troublemaker. She's always been that way. And when she phoned me and told me that she had something interesting to tell me, I thought I'd better meet her and see what mischief she was cooking up now. I see. I wonder if you do, Mr. Poirot. I could hardly call your progress startling up to this point. And you are right, Miss Mitchell. But there had been too many cooks in the mischief in this case. It is time that Hercule Poirot took over the cooking. And I assure you, I shall cook the goose of the murderer. <laughs> Take your feet from the desk and come with me. Where are we going? Where are you up to, Poirot? I have been making assignations. What are you talking about? We have a murderer to catch. Precisely, mon ami. A murderer who killed for hate and love. And therefore, I, Hercule Poirot, have been playing Cupid. Well, excuse me, Poirot, if I say this is the first time I've ever seen Cupid with a mustache. But of course, monsieur. And I assure you that I am not particularly proud of the role. In this case, I am bringing together two people whom I dislike. But come, I have set events in motion which should catch the criminal. All right, but I wish you'd tell me what you're going to do. There are too many suspects in this case, Poirot. Any one of the family could have done it. Not one of them has an alibi for last night. Mm, and do not overlook Mademoiselle Olivia. She is a most dangerous woman. Now, ah, look, if you know who did it, let's arrest him and get her over with. Mm, a miracle, a taxi. Huh? Taxi! Where are we going? 298 Creston Drive, please. That's where Henry Baldwin lives. See the guy who did it? Mon ami, I do not think that Monsieur Baldwin is at home. Poirot, will you please tell me what's going on? Monsieur Stevens, I told you that I am not proud of what I have done, eh? But murder is a crime which calls for any action. And what did you do? I think, Stevens, I have sent out an invitation to murder. I'm so surprised I'm forgetting my manners. Come in. Stop acting, Olivia. You know very well you sent for me. Darling, you out of your mind. I did nothing of the sort. I'd hardly send for you when I expect Lawrence in a very few minutes. And I don't think he'll be very pleased to find you here. Well, then what's this? A gag? It's a telephone message, obviously. It says that you ought to come over here right away. Henry, I swear to you I didn't call you. Olivia, if you're lying to me... Oh, I twist my arm. But look at me. Henry, I didn't send that message. All right. I believe you. But who did? I don't know. Somebody is trying to involve us in something. I'd better get out of here before Lawrence shows up. It couldn't have been Lawrence. I don't care who it was. I don't want Henry, any more. Do you think... Do you think Poirot could have done it? What? Why would he do a thing like that? I don't know, unless... Unless he thinks that... Thinks what? That I killed him, Maria. Why would he send me a message to bring me here? I don't know. But, Henry, I'm glad. Aren't you? I'm getting out of here. What are you afraid of, Henry? I'm afraid of a lot of things. Of course you are. You've always loved me, darling. You know, in your heart, you'd have married me in a minute if only Amelia had had the brains not to object to our marriage instead of trying to throw us together. But that's not true. Isn't it? Henry. Oh, darling, darling, darling. Lawrence. No, it's not Lawrence, Henry. Me, Alice. I can explain, Alice. You don't have to explain, Henry. Just what I always knew. Alice! Henry! Henry, let go put down that knife. No, Olivia. I used this knife once before. No, no, don't say it. Yes, Henry. I killed Aunt Amelia. I always hated her. She was evil. And she hated me for marrying you. She tried every way she could to ruin our life. I never thought of killing her until that dreadful day when someone put the idea in my mind. But Marie, I did that, Alice. I... We wanted to frighten Amelia into giving us some money. We never thought of murder. Funny, isn't it? 
You should put the idea of murder into my head. I'm going to kill you, Olivia. You'll never have Henry. You're not going to live, Olivia. Put the knife down, Madame Ellie. Yes, drop it. Stay with you. With you all the time. With you who sent me the note telling me I'd find Henry here. Yes, madame. I had to make you drop your mask and come out in the open. Reveal yourself. As I said to Madame Amelia the other day, murder cannot be private. <laughs> to listen next week when Agatha Christie, America's favorite mystery writer, brings you her favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, starring Harold Huber in The Bride Wore Bright. Music for Hercule Poirot is composed and conducted by Sylvan Levin. The program is directed by Carl Eastman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.